Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with the famous, infamous David Bond, and he's coming on my channel, which I'm very happy about. I've been following David for many years. Uh, he's a bit of an underground guy, popping in and out of the mainstream, and just want to have a cool chat with him here right now about dating, about lifestyle design, and whatever else David wants to share. Hello, David. Welcome. How's it going, man? How yeah, are you? And where are you? Uh, uh, right now, I'm in the Philippines, and um, with my camera guy mark and we just uh we're just uh, traveling right now we're doing some vlogs and i'm doing um working on some projects while i'm here thinking about settling down here but um yeah man a big fan of your stuff i've been watching it uh every night before bed you know and uh the quality is amazing you know everything you say is, is great a lot of pretty girls in the, in the videos really uh honored to be even recognized by your channel because i like i like it so much so that's it that's so funny you say that because you're one of the big ogs of this i don't know should i say industry done so many interesting things uh that just others don't we, we can get into that a bit later tell the people who don't know you a little bit about you so sure um, yeah so basics, um, and then we can go into detail i run a youtube channel called david bond that is a travel vlogging youtube slash advice slash pickup channel i started doing videos by putting a gopro on my forehead and doing cold approach in los angeles mm -hmm. so it all originated as kind of a joke like hey wouldn't it be funny if and um i posted my videos on unlisted on forums and eventually i started traveling i stopped doing the forehead thing and i started putting on my chest and originally my channel was just me picking up girls in the street with a GoPro. Eventually it kind of evolved into traveling, you know, so that all began in 2000, maybe 13, 2014. Okay. And so, you know, now, uh, now, you know, I've been traveling full time since 2015. I mean, I'm known for a couple of things. I'm known for internet scandals. I'm known for, uh, you know, traveling with girls with big boobs. Uh, I, I'm kind of a counterculture person. I'm, I'm surprisingly, I have, I have a lot of like controversial opinions and like the red pill space, um, kind of a polarizing person there. I'm either disliked a lot or like cult followed, you know what I mean? So for let's go even before, cause I'm always curious about the origin story of, of guys like you. How did you grow up and what made you even want to approach women on the street with or without GoPro? Yeah, so uh, in, in high school, well, in grade school, um, I was like a computer nerd, pretty antisocial. And um, a big factor was I was in a special ed. So special ed is in the education, in the public education system, special ed is where they put kids who are retarded. So like kids in wheelchairs and who can't speak and kind of like the dumb kids. So it's basically if you're so behind on your grades, they actually hold you back and they start to put you in special classes where you get special attention. Hmm. And one of the reasons that I was in special ed is because my mom was an alcoholic and so she was always blackout. I never got good grades. And so uh, being in special ed, I didn't even make a lot of friends because most of the most of the guys in special ed are pretty dumb, pretty weird. So pretty introverted, had a lot of weird self-image issues. And so as I got older, I slowly, I made one friend named Rob and we were kind of best friends. He taught me computers and, you know, windows and how to install video games. Um, I got into hacking. I ended up getting banned from the computer network at VHS because of it. And I almost got expelled because of that too. Cause I was, um, creating scripts to send messages to the whole network. And I was hacking the admin password and like, there's a whole like pre David Bond story. That's really insane. But, um, yeah. And so fast forward, fast forward. Uh, I, I got my Virginia, I lost my virginity at 19 to a girl. I wasn't that attracted to I was with her for a couple of years, kind of getting super fat. And I was with a girl for several years. I got a job at a carrot factory, basically where things took a turn was I stumbled upon the VHS one show, the pickup artist on YouTube. Okay. So you know what I mean? And, uh, I don't know why I just thought it was really interesting. It's like watched... old school. Was that a show about mystery? Yeah, Who it was, it was the VHS there? one show about mystery. And I, I was so captivated by it. I watched all two seasons in one sitting. 
Okay. So, you know, we're talking like maybe like 14 hours straight. I just sat there watching the whole thing. I was so captivated. So as a consequence, I started watching other videos. I watched Simple Pickup and then I watched RSD. And I was watching it just because I'm like, this is interesting. That was it, you know? You know, I, I'm a, I was a big fat guy that worked at the Carrot Factory. I don't know if you want to, I don't know if you've seen my fat picture no. before. Um, yeah, let me show you real quick. What does it mean, the Carrot Factory? I thought Carrot So I worked, I, I, worked, I worked at a uh, factory. This is what I look like back then. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. That's proper fat. Yeah, yeah. I, I can send the actual image. Um, no, I, I worked at a, I worked as an IT guy at a carrot factory. Like it was a factory that specialized in carrots. And so, you know, the carrot factory. Yeah. <laughs> it's a job. All right. So, yeah. So I was watching these videos every day and I remember having these like feelings like, man, I want to try this. Wouldn't it be crazy if I could try this? And, um, so I ended up getting into like little fights with my girlfriend. Eventually we broke up. We were together for five years. So there I was, single, fat, with no experience. Like, when I say no experience, it really, you know, I know that all the guys, they like to try to pretend that they're history. Like, I was a nerd, I was so shy. Mm -hmm. um, my, 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 like, I was pretty, you know, I didn't go to prom, I didn't go to a single party. I was in special ed, I was in the computer lab. Like, I had maybe like one, two friends. And um, so my my interaction with with girls was virtually nothing you know maybe my sister had a friend over and i would like look at her so i wanted to try the stuff and so i i did i did my first approach and it was obviously super cringe and i ended up trying i lost some weight went to la and my buddy rob who's my only friend he's like oh i want to try it too so we tried some stupid stuff one girl ended up liking me and i got so like i was so traumatized by how it worked i was like wow a girl responded and so I just kept doing it and then eventually I got I joined those groups like the Facebook groups with like all these guys and it's mostly just a bunch of weird dudes this is before tinder as yeah well. so one thing led to another and I started uh practicing and going to LA and doing it eventually I got a, I bought a GoPro and when I bought a GoPro that's when everything really accelerated because people started pro. <laughs> well, well they call well, the, uh, on, on the groups, they call me the GoPro guy, you know, because right. everyone was doing like these shady, like cell phone camera, like it was all shaky and shitty and bullshit. And mine was like 1080p, like super nice. And it was like on my forehead. So the audio was perfect. And uh, how did know, that it, influence the interactions? It, like, because I thought about doing that, but I never I was. Like, yeah. So I have all the footage and yeah. basically me and my buddy Rob, we would just go either I would wear the GoPro on my head or he would. And so he might do an approach just regular and then I would walk into it. And the girls would say, what's that? And keep in mind, this is 2013 when GoPros were barely even known. Right. And we'd always say the same thing. We'd say, oh, he lost a bet and he has to wear that all day. And okay. we would say, we would say it's off. We'd say, oh, it's off. It's actually just doing a time lapse. Every five uh -huh. minutes, it's a picture. Like we, we had this stupid explanation. Right. And the girls are like, oh, that's so funny. These guys are funny. You know, like that was it. And so if I did an approach with the GoPro on, the girls will go, what is that? And I go, oh, I lost a bet. I have to wear this stupid thing all day. And then we had this story where like, oh, you know, the, the football game, we just find out what. And so once there's a backstory about why I'm wearing it, they didn't really give a fuck. Yeah. Once so, you set the frame, people just like, okay. Yeah, yeah. And the same thing is when I did it on my chest, I would say, oh, I'm just testing my new camera. I'm actually doing a time lapse later. Let me show you an example. And I'd show an actual example. It was just me like walking and they're like, oh, that's weird. And then they just chat with me. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So when I started doing this, it was cool. But eventually I got kicked out of the, the groups because they thought I was promoting something. Okay. And I'm like, I'm not promoting anything. I don't have, I don't, I don't have a website. I'm just a guy. And I was like, oh, it sucks. I had this urge to do something crazy and big because uh, I just was feeling like this, this doom of getting older because I was 26. I was approaching 27. And I was sitting there thinking like, dude, I'm 27. I'm almost going to be 30. I haven't done anything. Mm -hmm. I, ha I haven't left the state. I haven't been in a plane. I've never been in a bar. I've never been in a club. Like, 
the number of things that I had done was like really embarrassingly low, you know? Right. And I know, I know every, every like guy loves these stories. Like I was a nerd and you know, everyone, but I mean, bro, like sounds pretty I, nerdy. I, yeah. I was pretty, I mean, like, I'm not exaggerating. You know what I mean? So I was watching, I was like thinking like, I'm going to be 30. Like I haven't done shit. I had this urge to do something big. So I did a skydive and the skydive really freaked me out because that was my first time being in a plane, you know, my first plane I jumped out of. <laughs> Jumping out of it straight away. Yeah. And so I was all adrenaline shot for like three days. Wow. And um, in, in that moment, I was thinking like, you know what, dude, I'm going to die. Like, fuck it. Like, I, like this is bullshit. I, and I just started getting really like, um, uh, like very, you know that, have you ever seen the movie American Beauty? My, if not my favorite movie, yeah. Great. <laughs> I'm glad that you say that because every time I bring this up, people are like, what, what's that movie? Oh, yeah. You know, you know the scene where he flip, he just, he like flips off and he's yeah. like, he just starts telling everyone off. He starts hitting the gym and he goes to his boss and he's just like, you don't get to tell me what to do anymore. And he, and he just changes. Yeah. I had, I had that. I started acting really weird. And I just remember think, cause I had this vision, like, you know, I'm going to die. I'm, you know, I'm gonna, like, this is ridiculous, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm all adrenaline shot. And, um, so I asked my boss if I could take some time off to go to Japan is the first time I had ever asked for vacation in five years. And they said, no. And I'm like, oh, five years. And I don't even get this, huh? Cool. Hey, I have an idea. What if I just went to Japan anyway? And they're like, uh, what? You know? <laughs> and it really was the American Beauty, like, spacey, weird, you know, vibes. Yeah. And I'm just Did like, you watch that movie people... before? No. Ah, it, okay. The movie is a movie that I watched later in life, but but yeah. now I like, I'm like, oh, dude, existential crisis, yeah. mental breakdown, very similar. And so I was like, hey, I know I go to Japan. What if I just go and they're like david are you drunk what's going on and i'm like hey i'll see you guys in a minute i just went to hr and i put in my two weeks and they all like were like whoa what the fuck and hr was like okay david is clearly having some problems right now we need to address this so they sat me down with the cfo the manager of it and hr and they they said listen david we understand that we don't know what's happening we don't know if you're like overstressed we don't want you to quit. We're prepared to give you a raise, a 30 day paid vacation and a new computer. Cause I've worked as a computer guy. I was like a new office desk computer. And I said, I was just sitting there. I was like, um, no, I'm cool. And they're like, uh, are you sure? Are you sure it's going to be a lot of money? Cause they're like wanting to give me like a $5 an extra raise or something in 30 day paid vacation. I think they were like, oh, let's, it'll, it'll get out of it it will get it out of his system. Anyway, I just said no. And then I'm just like, no. And I just quit. And I just went on the internet. I didn't know how to book a flight. So I was friends with this guy named Alex Vitkin. I'm sure you might know of him. No. He's just like this nerdy business guy. And he was in Japan at the time. And he like Skyped me and like taught me how to do it. I just booked a one-way ticket. And I, again, I had, you know, I have no plan. I'm, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And I just like me, my GoPro and my backpack. And I just went to Japan. And so now I'm in Japan. I have, again, you gotta understand like just like a week before I had a job and now I'm in Japan and I'm like, yo, let's pick up chicks in Japan, you know? Right. And so that's kind of how it began. And so I just was recording every fucking day. Like, dude, oh my God. And I have some wild stuff on video that I could never publish. Like, dude like blowjobs in the street picking up girls fucking them with the gopro on my head japanese school girls like you know uh sneaking cameras in the club uh wearing a you know wearing an obama mask and doing cold pro like fuck, just it was just chaos is that so like, like part of your personality that because you at the at the beginning of this video you said you're you know quite polarizing you're doing stuff that people would never do you just quit your job right you're just like nah fuck off boss is that like where do you think that comes from is that like genetics or how you well in childhood case, or i don't know if it comes from anywhere i i would say that a lot of the drastic impulsive decisions i was making 
was from this impending sense of mortality that was doom that was glooming over me mm -hmm. by turning 30. So it was basically an, a midlife crisis in every sense of the word. Like it really was just an unambiguous midlife crisis. And um, I just had this, every time I thought about stuff, I was like, well, I'm gonna die. Well, I'm gonna die anyway, you know? Yeah. And everything was cloaked in this. And also another thing that, that did accelerate things was when I had the job at the Carrot Factory, I changed my name on my Facebook account to David Bond because my coworkers kept wanting to add me as a friend. And I didn't want them to add me as a friend. So I deleted the account and made a new account with the name David Bond. I was like, oh, I, I like James Bond. I'll just admit that's funny. But because I had assumed the identity of David Bond, I started thinking like, what would David Bond do? Mm -hmm. And it was like, I had this like midlife crisis and, and I just started thinking like, well, what would David Bond do? And it was like my cartoon version of me. So you, you, know, you know how there's like these themes of like, people who have their real life and their online persona. Yeah. I didn't have an online persona necessarily because I wasn't doing YouTube videos. I was doing it for fun, but I did have a persona on the forums, like the GoPro guy, David Bond. And and because I had this name, David Bond, it, it gave me a little bit of extra permission to be a little bit more exaggerated, like you it, know? Yeah. But just over time, I just became the guy that I was, like I just became the exaggerated version without like, it wasn't like I was pretending, like, I, I kept being the exaggerated version so often that I just, I'm like, I'm David Bond now, you know? So I quit my job. I had 30000 in the bank, and I went to Japan. I lived there for two months, and then I left, and then I traveled to other countries, and it took me about 14 months to run out of money. So I went to Japan. I went to all the Asian countries, more or less. Then I, I ran out of money, and then I started working for Uber. And I was breaking even, breaking even, breaking even. And then I got a job at a hospital. And as soon as I got a job, the, the culture shock of having 14 months off traveling yeah. to like being, being back at the cubicle, I was like, oh my God, it, like the, 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 the culture shock, the lifestyle shock was so viciously different because you get accustomed, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, it's so interesting because I... Um, out of high school, got a chance in Austria. I'm from Austria. Mm -hmm. You have to either do military service or social service once you're out of high school. And mm. I got the chance to do it abroad. So usually you like work for the Red Cross or help old people or something. But I did it uh, in Nicaragua, which is a part why my name is now Alex Leon, because I lived in Leon for 15 months. So it's a very similar time frame. Wow. Interesting. And that also completely like changed the perception for me of, you know, oh, like you can just travel, you can just go to a place. Oh, there's places where it's like you can live off, I don't know, two, three hundred dollars a month. Well, that yeah, the, the the guys that I was traveling with in Japan, they were all that way, and I'm like, I can't, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, wait, so you guys just live in a new country every couple months? Yeah, exactly. They're like, well, yeah, well, we work on our, yeah. They're like, well, we work on our computer. So I'm like, yeah, I'm just like, dude, that is the coolest thing I've ever heard. Exactly. I couldn't believe it. And then I went back to Vienna and then, you know, my dad is like, oh, you should get a university degree. And I'm like, okay. And so I started doing programming, like computer science. And it was just like draining as fuck. And I also had this culture shock coming back to my own country of like, oh, all the people here just think yeah. the same way. Uh, and then I was like, all right, I'm just going to fucking start making videos for, for James Marshall and the natural lifestyle instead. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, once I, I always tell guys like you know some some of my uh, students are always like, oh, I want to do how do I? I'm like, dude, sometimes the best way to do stuff is you just jump into it and you're gonna get s the taste, and it's it's gonna make you motivated, you know? Yeah. It's like if if I had just sat if I had sat in the cubicle and just looked at videos, it wouldn't have given me the taste of like the lifestyle and the freedom versus like just jumping in because again for 14 months i didn't earn a single dollar like i was just draining my money you know and i was like really trying to like make it last but eventually that 30k turned into like 3k and i'm like okay uh yeah i can't do this anymore so yeah so i was back in the cubicle and i said you know what i'm just gonna save up 30k again <laughs> that was my idea yeah. My, my original plan was, what if I just had a job every other year? That was my, yeah. I, can, I was saving up money. And that's when I was like, this is stupid. Like, what if I try to sell something? So 
um, I launched a course and I did this when my YouTube channel only had 4,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I failed to mention there's actually a lot of stuff in the middle. Some of my videos got on Worldstar. Some of my unlisted videos got leaked. I, I made the news. I mean, this is all, you know, so old as I kind of forget about it, but I had little internet scandals while I was traveling and, and my, cha my channel just accidentally blew up and it was all from unlisted videos. I didn't even have any public videos. You know what I mean? I, I, had, I had an unlisted video that had never been published that had a million, uh, three million views. So you never tried to be famous, but no. because the content was so outrageous, it happened anyway. Because I would post it on, on RSD forums and like right. Facebook groups. And so I was, I was like, I was just doing it because it was funny. I, I didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So one thing led to another. I had a little channel and I'm sitting there in my cubicle. I'm like, you know what? What if I actually like made a video on purpose like, to try to do something? Hmm. So I made a little course called the Idiot's Guide to Getting Laid in Japan. And I made it all outrageous. I made it so ridiculous. And I just made it and I made it while I was at work. So if you watch the original product, you can see me at work in my work uniform. I'm like, yo guys, <laughs> welcome to, you know what I mean? So I'm, I, I, because I had night shift. So night shift, there's only one IT guy at the desk. Day shift, there's like five. So I'm like, yo guys, welcome to the blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And I'm just talking, I'm showing infield, you know, and people started buying it, you know? So I made like $10,000. From my japan guide i couldn't believe it i had like a tiny channel that accelerated my savings and so then i thought what if i made another one? Oh my god and i thought what if i made a x guide of every country so that was the original idea i started launching these little courses and they were cool eventually i started like breaking even and i'm like yo i'm breaking even i can't believe it yes living in $200, $300 a month apartments and like the ghetto is parts of everywhere. And uh, yeah, so that was how it all began. And things have evolved and changed. And yeah, that's pretty much the story. You know, so here I am now. Uh, lately, I've been, you know, I have a few projects that I've been doing. So for example, uh, we have a program called the Millionaire Social Circle, which is like a social circle photography boot camp thing. Yeah. Where guys fly in they get lectures they get presentations we go on their phones we look at their stuff we, we give them instagram photos we teach them right stuff. so the objective is let's can you help the game but also build your online profile yeah and um another another selling pitch is like the, some of the stuff that i do some of the stuff that i teach is could never ever be published because it's so controversial it's so edgy it's so it can be misinterpreted so easily especially now yeah and i go you guys really want the cutting edge David Bond technology? You gotta fucking be in the room with me, dude. Yeah, you can't. You know what I mean? Mm. There's that. I'm a business partner with uh, Squatting Casanova, so he does like cold approach fundamentals, 101, like 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 dating 101, and I, I do like the advanced in space, really crazy wild stuff, and so we kind of both work hand in hand. Right. There's yeah and because you are like an expert in kind of using technology obviously you're a hacker right you told me that and you used forums a lot and i know how you i don't know you've been running ads on on facebook and can you talk about what you want to share so what you know i first started off doing cold approach in los angeles and i only did day game i didn't like night game i thought it was scary yeah so well, I just never went. Me to too. I, I don't like night game, and I'm good at day game. It's just how it is. And um, it was cool, but then you know, um, the Tinder stuff came out. It was cool, but I still was like, "There's got to be, you know, there's got to be more." So I started like hacking Tinder, and so like I have a programmer buddy who was able to tap into their API. We got like 800 matches on like one hour, and we had this. We I had I got banned, and we did a bunch of experimentations. Then I started doing experimentations with how to trick tinder into thinking you're like a hot guy so i had this old technique that i've retired it's called the golden switch the golden switch is you create a brand new profile you use the photos of a really attractive guy mm -hmm. you buy gold you boost you get all the matches then you switch the profile to you you wait you wait for the profile to populate the new images then you swipe on the gold matches and since the girl <laughs> since the girl's uh, matches you after you switched she never knew that your profile was different so the yeah. algorithm the algorithm boosts you because you you're like oh wow this guy's getting swiped right on a lot of attractive women 
So his algo score is going to go through the roof. Yeah. Basically, you, you use some other guy's pictures, you do the switch, and then you message the girls. And so, like, I loved, I loved asking girls, so why'd you swipe right? Because they didn't swipe right. They, they you know, and... Not on, not on you, on the other guy. They'll, they'll backwards rationalize why they swipe. You know, they're like, oh, well, it's your puppy picture. I'm like, oh, really? You know? That's funny. And uh, another fun thing of doing the golden switch is you end up matching with, like, ex-girlfriends who, who, they're like, I didn't match you. How would I match you? <laughs> and you're like, well, you must have swiped right. Yeah. So that, you know, or like, um, I found a way to trick Tinder into giving me infinite refunds, for example. And like, I, I can't get into this too deeply because, you know, maybe perhaps, but for educational purposes, allegedly, uh, there's a way to trick Tinder into, into giving you infinite refunds. And so if you buy a super boost, which is like a hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah dude, that's yeah. insane. How that's a hundred bucks these days. Well, yeah. Tinder, Tinder now is pretty tight. It's hard. It's hard to break, but now now what I do, so that's, again, that's all taught exclusively in my Millionaire Social Circle Mastermind. But um, yeah, I do that now. And um, I've always been fascinated with the idea of meeting women in weird ways. Like I, for me, like, like I'll walk into like a, a nightclub, right? And I'll, you know, most guys are like, oh, where's the cuties? Let me say hello. I'm like, hold on. Like, look at the system that's in front of me. Okay. Where are the girls? Where are the guys? And like, most guys are like, okay, where's the girls? Okay, there, let me go there and let me just hop over the things to get to them. Mm -hmm. But no one thinks, well, like who made the things to hop? So like, like a nightclub, like in Vegas, it's so, it's structured where every, the hotter girls are all behind paywalls. Yeah. So like to enter is a fee and then all the, you have the public venues and then you have these like velvet ropes and then you have even more VIP and the men who are in the club who work for the club have an incentive to take attractive women out of the public and into the VIP areas because when men spend money they get commission when pretty girls are near men men don't men stop being cheap there's a whole science of course so you know in Dan Bilzerian's book he talks to like the setup so for me I don't think oh look where are pretty girls? Let me go. I don't think that way. I think, okay, how can I create my own system where girls come to me? You the price. Yeah. Or like, like, for example, I have a thing, I have a, my own, like my, my own thesis, I call it bottles theorem. So bottles theorem is my observation traveling that bottle stands for bonds, optimal dating location. So in general, what I've observed is the places that are best for dating are the cities which are highly lived in but not visited. So mm. when you go to a, a city that's lived in by people but not visited by external people, um, those tend to be the best places to date. And the reason for that is dating is effectively a marketplace of women and offers when you think about it, right? So women wake up and they have options to what to do with their time. When you're in a high stimulus place, basically places that are highly touristy, like places where- Barcelona. Yeah, when there's lots of, because tourists are, are, are uh, tourists are very sensitive on time, but not sensitive on money. So they don't, they don't mind just like, how do we make this happen? Like I'm here for a week, like I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. So, Concerts will go to touristy places. All this money flows in where people are not price sensitive. And so when women are in environments with lots of stimulus, they get spoiled. And so your coffee date can never compete with like the other things. Yeah. So, but if you go to a big city, which is, doesn't have as much stimulus, your offer will stand out much more because you're in a marketplace that's like dry. You so know that could be like not the capital, but like the second or third biggest city of a country. But, but Bali versus Jakarta. Right. Yeah. So Bali, Bali filled. Bali, yeah. Bali is just full of things, full of stuff. There's dudes. That every fit. girl has like five offers every single day. Exactly. There's tons of dudes and tons of stuff. Sick house parties, cool DJs. Yeah. Jakarta is just traffic and boredom. Boredom. So you go to Jakarta. And you can find really attractive girls that are really receptive because their options in Jakarta are much different than in a high stimulus environment. So 
basically you go to like these uh you know second or third tier cities that everyone would say are boring and then when you go there you become like i always, I always joke i like to go where i like to go to cities where i'm the only guy in town you know like i'll go to these cities where i know i'm the only motherfucker in town there ain't no dude because no cause why would someone even go here you know what i mean like it's so there's nothing to do but when you go to a place where there's nothing to do suddenly the only thing to do is you <laughs> you know what i mean and there's there's really nice girls living in these small towns that are genuine women that are like have you know they're great they're beautiful and yeah. they just have a job there they have family there and their options are go to that one bar that's open sometimes and it's always the same people so if you fucking land in like a meteor and you start running ads especially if you run ads in these places that are not the uh, the ad space is cheap i went to um um i went to nicaragua and uh, i was running ads in nicaragua the ads were so powerful like dude everybody knew because nobody's fucking running first of all uh, nicaragua isn't even connected to visa network because they're so undeveloped so yeah. when i would ads yeah, the no second poorest country in south america or central america it, it's very possible that when i was running ads in facebook on in nicaragua i, I might have been the only ad in the whole you know what i mean because yeah who would run even ads nobody has money to buy because, you. because nicaragua they can't buy things on the internet because the import so yeah. it's one of those things where like that that's like a perfect situation you go to a place where acquisition for ads is, is so cheap and i'm probably the only guy in town like who the fuck even goes to nicaragua and so instead of like instead of like doing what, what most guys do is go well, where's the pretty girls blah 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 okay we go to the thing, we pay the guy, and we just play the game that someone else created for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's basically like there's some genius that set up a game that 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 can that someone else can jump into and like make them money. Right. But I know I want to make my own game. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly in like the Terminator in you know the scene where he f falls naked. You know, like he just lands naked and he just gets up and he just walks yeah. into a bar and he's like, "Give me your clothes." Give me your boots. And then he's like driving. And now he just like starts terminating. Like, that's what I do. I just land. I, I don't know anybody. And I'm like, turn on the ads. Turn on this. Boom. Hundreds of messages. Create the funnel. Blah, 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 blah. And then like within within a day, I have like, you know, a harem. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm here in Cebu. Mark came here to uh, to help me document some of the harem stuff I'm doing. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I'll just go like a week ahead. And the idea is he's, he's a professional videographer. The idea is he wanted to like document the process. The problem is like in the week of us being separated, like I had already created it by the time he got here. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, so I already have four girls in my group chat. We're hanging out. And so it's all about playing the game smarter, not harder. You know what right. I mean? And for me, it's not about the outcome. It's about, it's, it's interesting. Like, do you know what? I'm obsessed with, and this is going to be my next project. I want to meet girls with no that don't have a smartphone. Now, yeah. now, do I want that? I don't know if I want that, but how would I do that? Like, if yeah. you had to find a pretty girl that's single that has no smartphone, how would you even fucking do that? That's an interesting puzzle. I'm not. In, I don't even want. Like, obviously, a girl that doesn't have a smartphone, she probably. I, there's probably like something going on there. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. I know that there are girls that exist that are somewhere out there, probably maybe in the mountains, that just don't, maybe there's no signal and there's just no reason. And so yeah. I think it's interesting to solve that. You know, like, okay. I, you know, what if I, what if I paid a graffiti artist to like, okay, you want to know, Here, here's an example. There's a guy who's one of my subscribers. You're going to laugh at this. I know I'm kind of talking too much here, but one last story. Is, there's this guy there's not, this guy not applicable to most viewers but definitely fascinating this guy recognized me at uh where i'm staying he comes up to me and he's like hey dude i'm a big fan i've been watching your stuff he's like oh yeah dude i, I love your stuff i like how creative you are i actually do something similar i'm like what do you mean and he shows me okay <laughs> what is it can you explain usa my this guy made a shirt that Every says, I'm man. looking for, it's a shirt that says, I'm looking for a girlfriend in, with his Instagram handle. 
And I'm like, what, what do you do? He's like, okay, what I do, I follow your bottle's theorem. He, he, again, he's a follower. He yeah. goes, and I just walk around. <laughs> and girls think it's funny that I have a shirt that says, I'm looking for a girlfriend with my Instagram handle. They think it's funny because it is. And guess what they do? They post it on Facebook. And it goes viral because of how funny it is. But guess what? There are girls who are like, I'm going to message him. Are you serious? And he's like, yeah, I meet tons of girls this way. The guy literally just walks around. He's like, I want to wear a shirt that's clearly <laughs> funny, but it, it's indirectly marketing me. And so if a girl looks at me and is curious, obviously, like, maybe like super hot girls probably won't do this. Yeah. The point is not whether this is effective. The point is this guy is thinking differently. And I like that. That's interesting yeah. to me. Look, the low IQ stuff is, let me go with a pretty bitch, with a pretty girl, dad. What do, what do, what do I have to do? Buy the bottle? Blah, 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 cool. Hello, pretty girl. It's like, dude, that's so lazy. Like, yeah. can't you think a little different, you know? Well, so, that's where your hacker mindset comes in and mine as well. Like, you know, it, that is so interesting, though, because most of my clients are engineers or financial analysts or smart people, programmers, right? And they're so good at hacking systems. They're so good at even hacking money, career. And they're so bad at hacking social stuff. Yeah. Um, so if... Some people would just apply the same mindsets there. Plus, you know, combined with charisma, I guess mainly like overcoming the fear of approaching, which you did by realizing, fuck, life is short. I better just fucking do something about it. Then there can be amazing results. Like I often say engineers actually have an advantage in dating because they're able to hack shit and think in systems and, you know, scale stuff. Obviously, you know, you're a special guy in that sense. And you've been to different countries, you've seen different cultures. What would you advise, let's say, you know, as a first step for a normal guy who's not going to be like, I'm going to quit my job, move to Japan, fucking strap a GoPro on me, make a, an online course. Um, what is advice for guys out there to just get started? Because, you know, I know it, especially the TNL channel has like 120,000 subs. People watch our videos, hundreds of thousands of people watch the videos. How many do end up on the live workshops? Like under a hundred every year. So what is the first step people can make today to do something about their social and dating life? A is volume. I always say this, more data equals more feedback. So the mistake that a lot of guys make is they want to know all the answers to, to things without like doing any activity. They want to like analyze. I like to make this analogy with poker, right? There's two ways you can learn how to play poker. You can watch a bunch of tutorials on how to play poker. You can start running math equations on ace king versus pocket queens. And you can like do all that. Yeah, whatever. It, it, yeah. But you can do that or you can just play poker. Yeah. And you can, it's the question is like, is 10 hours of studying poker instead of 10 hours of playing poker, which one is more learning? And in my opinion, 10, 10 hours of playing poker is going to be more learning. I think what most guys do is they want to know all the answers before they do anything. And they're always like, so what's the perfect opener? What's the perfect picture? It's like, yeah. Like, well, because they're okay. afraid, right? They're afraid to actually make the opener. I think it's better to do stuff without knowing how to do it and then studying how to do it than just studying how to do it. Right. Like so many guys, like, like we, we do these weekly calls in our groups and so many problems could just be solved if these guys just, just had more volume. So, yeah. So some guys are like, 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 here's an example. A lot of guys, they do online dating. Some guys meet girls out and they're just not getting enough data points for anything to be meaningful. So, you know, maybe a guy's like, oh, man, I, got a, I did a boost. I got 50 matches. And then we open his phone. And we're like, dude, you didn't reply to anybody. Like, oh, I haven't replied yet. I'm like, okay, you, you can't. It makes no sense to analyze your one date when you have 50 lead. Like, you need volume to get information. So what I, what I always do is I go, look, if you're wanting to learn stuff, you need to treat it the same way that you would treat anything else, right? If you were wanting to learn how to draw, you wouldn't be like, okay, I want to draw the Mona Lisa. Like you would just start sketching. You would like stencil, you know, you put your little paper over someone else's art and you just try to like outline it, 
you just kind of cheat, you know? Yeah. Maybe you just start drawing circles. Maybe you start doing stickmen, and then you slowly move up, whatever. Um, I remember when I used to when I used to drawing, I used to like draw eyes, and then I draw noses, and you just kind of draw. The act of drawing without knowing how to draw is how you learn how to draw. With drawing, that's so obvious, and I would love guys to make that mental shift also with social stuff, with approaching, because I get it. It is hard, right? It can be scary. There's a hot girl. What is she going to say? What is she going to think? I'm going to feel like an idiot. But it's like, okay, so what? Like, once you get into the flow, you understand that nothing matters. Like you said, we're all going to die, and that she doesn't remember you. It's just like people have this mental block around doing a first approach or... You know, going yeah. a date or, or escalating on a date. To see, and I can relate because I've been sitting on dates for probably a year. Once I got dates, before I didn't get any dates. Then I did street approach. I know this is like a controversial take. Like there's a lot of debate like, oh, should you should you like go on dates or do approaches with girls that you're like not super attracted to? I, I actually think you should. I, I think. Yeah. Like, like, how are you going to learn? Or exactly. I go, look, you're going to be attracted to. Like. If if you got a girl that says yes, just just go on it. Like, there's gonna be things you learn even if you're not wanting her. And like, what else oh, you got going on? Swiping on fucking TikTok. Yeah, like like guys are just not guys are not willing to just get their hands dirty and just like just do stuff without knowing how. They always want the answers first. They're yeah. like, oh, what is perfect? Everything's the per-. like, bro. We had one of our millionaire social circle students. Keep in mind, he paid twelve grand for this. He pays tw- he so he gives me twelve thousand dollars. And we have all these lectures, and he didn't even make an Instagram until the first week. Mm-hmm. And we're like, "Why didn't you? What, what do you mean? What, you know, we're like, dude, we, we're doing photo shoots, we're delivering these like high quality, edited images." And he goes, "I just don't know what the perfect username is." I'm like, yeah. "Dude, you could ch- you, first of all, you could change at any time." I go, "You paid us twelve thousand dollars. We're giving you really cool." information we're giving you we're delivering photo sh- photo shoots for you we're doing everything we're teaching you how to run instagram ads we're teaching you how to do everything and you're hung up about this stupid detail yeah so that's like the perfect example of like was he an engineer or what was his job um yeah he was like a computer programmer yeah i see that it's just like they're overthinking stuff and the the problem is what gets them what makes them successful in their job in engineering, which is like perfectionist and thinking stuff through and planning really well before, you know, deploying, fucks them up in their dating life. That's the thing is because there's nothing more, there's nothing less mathematical and logical about humans. Humans yeah. are messy. We have moods. We get sick. We have hormones. There, You ain't going to analyze, you know what I mean? You can't. Girls aren't robots. Mm-hmm. You can't ask chat GPT what the fucking approach, you know what I mean? Like you have to just accept that social, you know, meeting girls, meeting people is something that's messy and doesn't make sense sometimes. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So uh, it's better to think of it like, it's better to think of it more like an art than a science. So you just need to accept that you're just doing this messy, sloppy, weird thing, and the only way to get a sense of it is just to jump in and just and in. make a bunch of, yeah. You know and accepting mean? also, that this, <laughs> again, when I see um, on my infield videos, I see comments. That was one guy like years ago, <laughs> it was hilarious. He analyzed every approach in the comment section, and he would like replace one word I said, and he said, would have been better if you said this. Or the way I was standing. Oh, your your legs are too much together here. Uh, or your tonality in that uh, yeah. second sentence wasn't strong enough. And you just know that's a guy who just never approached a girl in his life, because he then he would know if he'd done approaches that it doesn't fucking matter. It's first of all your vibe, and you just like you say volume in there. The girl doesn't give a fuck anyway. And also the understanding of the dudes who get laid with the hot girls, you know, like I'm surrounded by really attractive women, like especially internationally. I'm a bit spoiled because I lived in Ukraine. It's just insane. Like you walk on the street and basically everyone is approachable. Um, And still, I'm often with not so attractive girls 
and I'm sleeping with not so attractive girls to get to the level. Like you have to be comfortable with yeah. everyone in order to get to that level. Think people think, oh, I just skip the five, sixes, and sevens. Uh, and because I'm only into nines, I'm like, bro, that's not how it works. Like, yeah, it's then in front of a nine, she's going to blow you out. You have no experience. You don't know how to handle a woman at all. You don't know how to hold space. You don't know anything. Yeah. This, the need to be perfect, the need to analyze. You just got to, like, a big a big fear that a lot of guys have is, like, I don't want to look cringe. Dude, there's nothing more cringe than, like, meeting people. Like, it's all cringe. <laughs> You're just, just Embrace the cringe. Yeah, like, it, everything is cringe, dude. Like, like everything... Every activity of learning is cringe. Like, I I'm sure that if we were, like, assholes, we could, like, watch videos of, like, babies trying to walk and be like, oh, my God, so cringe. He doesn't know how to walk. What a loser. It's like, well, yeah, yeah we – no one does that because we understand that a child is learning. But, like, as mm -hmm. soon as it's a learning adult, we just – we don't cut him any slack, you know? Yeah. That's like, that's point. why I think a lot of these, like, red pill channels that they do – re there's a lot of, like, dating coaches that react to other dating coaches doing approaches and, like, make fun of them. And I'm like – Fuck that. I'm like, I go, what, what do you, don't you realize that your, your viewers are probably going to be more scared to do it? Because if, if they, if they look at you and you're like, look at this guy, he's so stupid. He's so cringe. It's embarrassing. Jesus, man, it, you're, mm -hmm. you're putting all this pressure on the viewer that if they did it, that you, you know what I mean? Like, it's like if you're in a nightclub and there's guys in the corner who are like, look at those dancing people. They don't know how to dance. See that guy in the red shirt? He doesn't. He's not that good at. Yeah, like okay, like is it, imagine a dancing teacher talking that way. Yeah. Imagine it's a dance, good. like that, that's why that's why I think it's so crazy. Yeah. It's like, all right, guys, we're gonna react to this cringe, and you're like, dude, you're literally a dating coach. Like this is like a dance instructor making fun of people dancing wrong. Like obviously, it comes from a deep sadness and pain inside these types of people. Like. The more I'm in this, the more I learn. Like, even in comments, I just have empathy now for people roasting yeah. me in my comments, for people criticizing me. If people make videos about me one day, I'm going to be like, thanks for the free exposure, basically. Yeah, I'm not getting angry. I'm not arguing with anyone. And I just see the Like, I've never once in my life have I been criticized by somebody above me, like, more successful, making more money, having hotter girls it's always the guys below who are just punching up nobody's punching down so what i want to get at is correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like there has been more approaching slash pickup slash you know dating content out there a couple of years ago and i feel like youtube either took a lot down dating coaches got too scared to put themselves out there Maybe it's crypto. People try to make money with crypto instead of dating courses. But I feel like the competition is less. You know, thinking back, RSD was huge. Um, there's less. And I think it has something to do with cancel culture and just like dudes not wanting to put years into their channel and then YouTube just shuts it down overnight. Um, yeah, I, I have a lot to say on this subject. I actually think it's, first of all, YouTube algorithmic, algorithmically banned a bunch of pickup channels a few years ago. Yeah, that nuked a lot of material. That was of because of that BBC documentary, or um, I don't know the exact cause, but mm -hmm. there was a time where all the pickup stuff got deleted. A bunch of people I knew got banned. Everyone was having strikes, and that really, really put a huge dent. And like that nuked a lot of stuff. When that happened, there was this massive vacuum that needed to be filled. You know of content like dating advice stuff. That's the first factor. Mm -hmm. The second factor <clears throat> is there is a issue in the Western world of men being sexless. This is something that's growing. We all know this, 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 the statistics that's like one, like 33% of the guys haven't had sex in like a year or something like that. Or yeah. I think it might even be more. I don't know the exact yeah. story. of every guy under 30 is virgin. Or... The number of guys that are struggling to meet women, that percentage has been going up and up and up and up. Yeah. So you have a bigger demographic of guys that are sexually frustrated simultaneously with a, a lack of of real information on how to solve it, mm -hmm. okay? So all the information on how to solve it, because like 
if I was watching YouTube today, I would stay fat and I would stay at the care factory. I just would be mad because instead of watching RSD and simple pickup, I would be watching red pill stuff. Yeah. So you have sexually frustrated dudes. You have a, a vacuum of, of content, a vacuum of genuine, real, how to fix it, problem solving stuff. Yeah. Okay. That this, this vacuum got filled slowly with the new stuff, which I call it, I call them the microphone dating coaches. So the microphone dating coaches are the guys that kind of look like you with the microphone. Just, they're just in front of a microphone and they just talk about stuff. They don't I show call them the bedroom, the bedroom dating coaches. Yeah. The bedroom dating Their coaches. bedroom. Yeah. So you have a sexually frustrated, huge male population. And then you have these dating coaches. And then what, what happened was the guys that started to change their red pill stuff to stop being about how to fix your life. It started to be about like how to be, how to hate girls and how to make them look stupid. And let's, let's attack women. Let's insult them. And that became popular because when you're sexually frustrated, it's actually quite entertaining to watch an OnlyFans girl get destroyed. Yeah. Fuck. Right. Yeah. Wow. It's the same thing with, remember like in 2016 where it was like feminist gets destroyed or like, you know, uh, libtard destroyed by facts. And it was like all these videos of like feminists versus, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. When, when the feminists and the woke stuff bubbled up, it became really entertaining to, for these figures to pop in and to like pop it down. And so all these videos became really popular, like so-and-so destroys feminists. Well, I yeah. think a similar thing's happening where you have a sexually frustrated male population who is so sexually frustrated, they're actually angry. Mm -hmm. And suddenly this it's red dangerous, pill. right? Yeah. Then you have an algorithm that says, if you can find, if these sexually frustrated guys. They need something to click on. And if you give them exactly. something. If you're, you're sexually frustrated and you look, you see a video and it says like, Fresh and fit destroys OnlyFans model, yeah. embarrasses her. It, it, it's it, it, it's exciting because you're like, yeah. yeah, like she won't fuck me, but at least she's stupid, and I want to watch her get destroyed. It's a very I similar. I want to fuck her because I just proved how stupid she is, and I'm smart. Therefore, I would never. And therefore, I'm right. Yeah, it, it it it's it's the same thing as the feminists getting destroyed by like Milo Yiannopoulos. You, you remember those videos? And they were yeah, more, more for America. Viral, dude. Yeah. Feminist wreck, destroyed, libtard. There's you know all that stuff. That's because there were people who were on the political spectrum who were like really frustrated with the political situation. So these videos went viral. So I think there's a lack of real stuff because it got banned. It got filled with all these dudes in front of a yeah. microphone. They slowly realized that if instead of giving advice, if they just yell at women, yeah, the videos go viral as shit. And then the women are like, oh my God, this is great. If it goes viral, I can promote my OnlyFans. I can promote my whatever. Yeah. And so now you have this like symbiotic relationship of like men hating women. And then women are like, yeah, hate me. Let's make some viral videos. And then you have yeah. these sexually frustrated guys who are probably buying the OnlyFans simultaneously getting it. It's it's like so insane. And so- Well, what's that, next? What's happening next in your opinion? Do you have visions for the next, I don't know, five yeah. years? What it's going to develop? So. I have a prediction. I call it the sale, the sexual male exodus. Right now, we have a storm brewing where the sexual dating market has been imbalanced for a long time, where you have a lot of the most traditionally attractive men all concentrated in like just a few places. Mm -hmm. And those places also have a problem of obesity. So, like, half the girls are fat. So, like, the girls have access to the hottest guys and their competition is like the supply of attractive women is really low because of the obesity because attra attractive guys who, you know, are rich and powerful and cool. They want girls that aren't fat. So the supply is artificially lower because of the obesity. So this, oh. this dating market creates this weird situation where all the hottest guys, all the coolest guys are all in one place. And the women, the, the supply of women is reduced because of the obesity. So that's why you have these wild things of girls who are like not even that attractive, like being flown out to Dubai and all that shit, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, though, because of COVID, a lot of people have moved online, and the 
realization that they could just take their laptop and go somewhere else, it's slowly hitting the male consciousness. Like the, the passport bro thing is like, they put a label on it. Yeah. I've been a passport bro forever, right? But the se sexual male exodus will occur when it finally hits the mainstream male consciousness that they can be, they can actually just travel. And once they realize that they're like, hold on, like this, this dating market that over here is radically different than this dating market. And they start you moving. Like North America, high obesity, uh, girls are spoiled versus, I don't know, Asia or Eastern Europe where girls are not obese. I mean, you walk out here, yeah. there's no obese person. Um, and still traditional. Is that, that what you mean? Exactly. Right now, American women are more or less competing with, with nobody. The way it works is women just stay at one place until they're moved by a man. Women rarely move themselves. Mm -hmm. So another thing is that, so men are willing to move women around. The problem is the, the women in other countries are hard to move in. You can't move them into the country because it's really difficult to, to for like, let's say if, if a girl's from like Venezuela, it's, you can't easily fly out a Venezuela chick to like Miami because yeah. of the visa laws. But it's easy for an American guy to go to Venezuela. Well, actually not Venezuela. Let's just say Colombia. It, it's only a one-way The women can't come here. So the women in America are guarded because they, they can only be, they're only competing internally. Yeah. But the girls on the outside can't be flown in, but the guys can fly out. Right. So, so the marketplace hasn't realized this yet. Does that make sense? Yeah. Once the guys are like, wait, I can just fly out. I can live cheaper and I can have better women. And it doesn't even change anything because I'm on my laptop anyway. The Col Columbia is only a three-hour difference. When that starts to tap into the male consciousness, there's going to be a sexual male exodus where the men are just going to start to like fly out. And they're going to go, wait a second. Like, I don't need to pay rent in San Francisco. I can just go to Columbia. The girls are hotter anyway. Like, what's the big, you know what I mean? When that happens, the, the, se the, the sexual marketplace is going to start to balance. Because right now it's like this. And then once it starts to balance, it, there's going to be like a pendulum swing. And what's going to happen is all the girls in the easy countries are going to get hard. And all the, all the girls in the hard countries are going to get easier. Mm -hmm. And then, the, and then this, these things, it's going to wobble. Eventually it's going to equalize. And then again, we're getting really kind of conspiracy theory. I do think eventually when the, the, sex, the sex doll companies can start to integrate AI and chat GPT into the sex dolls. What's going to happen? This is my prediction. The cell, the sexual male exodus will occur. It's going to balance the sexual marketplace while simultaneously sex dolls are going to get advanced enough with AI that sex will become worthless. All men can get basically 80% of is with virtual, no, no cost to work. Yeah. At that point, sex will become a worthless asset. And the new asset will become connection. So women will, will no longer be able to wield their body as an asset in, in the negotiation of dating because it's, it's worthless now. The new, the new asset will be connection. And women, to compete in this environment, will have to go back to the traditional Could you stuff. define connection in that context? Um, having, like, deep connection and, like, uh, like uh, romantic um, falling in love, uh, intimacy, deep conversations, true, genuine, like, look, we all, we all know, like for sex, you don't need to have a deep conversation. Of course. It, you know, if the, if, if the girl's hot and she's down, you're getting like all this, but the sexual need is going to be satisfied. But then that need to have a conversation and cuddle and, and know it's a real human and, and the touch and the feel and like all the stuff that isn't sex that we love to do with women like having them around if we're sick maybe they clean the house maybe they give us comfort like all the all the wife stuff all the wifey stuff that that's going to become the new wielding mechanism so if you're on a date the girl's like if the girl's hot it's going to be like who gives a fuck my sex robot's hot and Which they're going to have to because currently girls get rewarded by society by you know, having a hot Instagram profile, basically like feeding into the narcissistic social media machine, which is against the connection. Like they can basically be toxic, yeah, narcissistic, have certain character traits that are makes it harder with them to connect. Um, so there is a bit of a 
you know, conflict happening there as well. Because yeah, I'm I'm around a lot of girls with a lot of followers, and it's just like they are on the narcissist spectrum purely due to their environment and the world rewarding them for that. So well, because yeah, exactly, because they're in a they're in a set. Okay, on Instagram, girls are getting social media has globalized the dating world, but. God, honestly, man, there's so much I could talk about. Yeah, it's stuff. huge. We can do a part two one. It's huge. Yeah, but I get look, you. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, a ma- like a ma- when 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 sex becomes a, a, a worth that yeah. it's it's not like a ma- every single girl was a ten physically. Yeah. Like, really imagine that. You would no longer be talking about hot girls. That that would not be a meaningful thing to talk about. Yeah, it's not rare anymore. It's it's a I don't know. It's not an NF, a rare NFT. So, what would be rare? It would have to be she's smart. It would have to be, be human. Ex- the, the the other things about a girl would have to they they'd have to compete on that. Yeah. And that that would do. I'm telling you, man. The se- sexual maladjustice is going to go like this. It's going to go like this. It's going to equalize, and then probably by this time, the robot stuff's going to happen, and the whole it's the game is going to change big time. You think that so, like in, when do you think sex robots are actually like moving like humans feel like I, I think it, I, I think it's a lot sooner. I, I'm not even gonna pretend to I mean, I don't know, twenty years or less. Maybe yeah. I mean it took it took the internet twenty years to go from I mean nineteen ninety five to, to to now. I mean, Jesus, you know. Yeah. Sure. I mean so and the and the AI stuff is moving AI a is lot. new every week. Um okay. I mean it's it's kind of you're right about this vacuum. It was interesting because there was this documentary on the UK BBC where there was like a, a undercover journalist on a dating workshop. Mm-hmm. And the dating workshop was pretty harmless, I would say. I mean, sure, right? There was some, I don't know the company, and they were a little bit like, I don't know, talk to that bitch or not even that, like nothing like horrible. And then they tried to make this documentary exposing them of like men manipulating women on the street uh giving them their phone number like she was manipulated into giving her contact detail consensually yeah and it was like the the documentary got really bad reviews not just from like pickup community but everyone they were like you guys were trying to expose something that wasn't even exposed worthy but still youtube then took down a third of all channels in that and I think that's what made RSD go, oh, shit, we should pivot to business. Otherwise, we lose our entire business. Maybe that was the reason, maybe not. But I feel like that was part of it. Um, and maybe managed. Yeah, well, look, Tyler's called me many occasions. And we've had, like, really long conversations. Um, he's, 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 he's overly paranoid about everything. Yeah. And every time any of me and my boys get canceled, he calls us to get details. Mm-hmm. Just to get... he's a little paranoid on a lot of things. Um, he's also he's also getting older. Yeah. I think that the decisions that RST is making are not 100 percent him. I think that he's got his business partners and yeah. Look, look, when when you got whenever you're doing what they're doing, like they're not. When they first started, they were like very principled and very like let's talk about what's true and false. And yeah. now they're like, well, let's look at the analytics and let's deal with the number. You know, it, it just it just became like let's make money. Out, basically, it's just like the band that sells out. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I'm bad. Really, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, it's like it's like a cool underground band that's like edgy, and then suddenly like record labels start offering them money, and they're like, all right, let's remove the anarchy patches and like let's sell Coca Cola. You know, it's. Ugh, I got it's you. Fucking, well, there, there is still this vacuum because now, I feel like, how as a man do you learn? what actually matters because you you switch on youtube like you said and then what am i hearing okay women are either idiots and every woman is on only fans which is just not true right like yes there's a lot of girls on only fans but it's definitely not like a high percentage like there's still a lot of fucking girls out there who are just normal women who just want to have a normal dude um or you've been like okay i need a six pack or i need multiple six figures income um yeah, I don't have an answer to that. I mean, I'm trying with my channel to make people understand. Okay, look, I, I this is where I get really. Pol- this is where I get like, like I a lot of this red pill stuff opposite of what I believe. You know, like this high value man thing. You know, mm-hmm. like how many fucking videos do I need to hear about 
these this ridiculous conspiracy theory that a high value man is like, oh, you can't do X, Y, Z unless you have this much in the bank and what's your net worth and how much does he earn? Bro, like what happened to the the pickup world that taught us game is supreme? You know, if you're yeah. confident and funny, girls will respond to you. Joyce, and girls are willing to forgive. Read like, a poem if, here and there. Yeah, like how many how many videos do we have to watch? Like we all saw the the homeless guy in New York City video. We all saw, you know, a simple pickup running around in fat suits. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, and like it's all this stupid shit. You know, it's like, I don't know. Like the current red pill stuff is, I think it's teaching guys the wrong stuff. Because the algorithm is rewarding it. That's the problem. Like YouTube tried to shut down pickup to protect women and men, and now it's promoting the exact thing that. Like, like, like they're, any of the, the red pill guys are, at, they're like, oh yeah, you know, it's all about your follower count and your blue check mark and your net. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you talk? Like, who, who, on what basis? And the thing is, these dating, dating guys, they, they just make, they're just in front of a microphone. They don't travel. They don't have infield. Zero. Their data, their data point is like one city. I, I, I know as someone who travels a lot i understand that dating is not universal it is very contextual right <laughs> so doing cold approach in ukraine is probably going to be different than doing cold approach in japan yeah and like do you know what i mean like girls are respond differently based on culture and like language and like current events and there's a context to everything so these guys that are like making these blanking statements like, oh, like I was watching this video and this guy's like, you know, a man's only as faithful as his options. Like give a nerd a blue check mark, a Lamborghini and watch him get some models. I'm like, that's the dumbest shit, especially because some of my clients from Millionaire Social Circle, we have a guy who makes $2 million a month. Okay. He is a bodybuilder. The guy's shredded. He has like 5% body fat. And Man, he's that's tall, the best example. Ever. He's tall as ever. Okay. He's, he's the tallest student. The guy is literally a bodybuilder because he's an influencer for a bodybuilder and he makes $2 million a month. He was running parallel with my buddy Ash, who is a five foot six bald Indian guy. Okay. All the red, you know, again, blue check mark, 100K plus fall, all the stuff, all the stuff, right? Everything you need. Indian guy missed presentations because he was going on so many dates and he was getting laid and he, Again, I could pull up our, we have a telegram. The guy was fucking taking selfies naked with all these girls every day. It's because he, he's been living in Vegas doing, trying to do pickup for like years. And so yeah. he's already like really aggressive and he's already like honed in. The other guy, the other guy, his dating experience is really shitty. But on paper, he has all the stuff, mm. right? So like, oh, what, what happened to the theory that it's all about the high value man blue check mark? It's fucking so stupid untested what really matter yeah what really matters is if you have if your game is decent if you're taking action and you're implementing i mean like we all you and i know that that both all things being equal like what really matters is like you and you yeah. is not, you are not your net worth you are you are who you are and what you talk about and your presentation and your vibe and your energy and your confidence i think and like i i think i know what it is i know some of these guys are like high valley man the thing is they are high value. They have money. They have the blue check mark. They have whatever, but they're also really charming, and they're leaving that out. <laughs> like, yeah, the guys who promote that, they do have charisma. They have great game, and then they also got rich. And now they're selling courses, and obviously, you don't sell a course as well. You know, you don't sell a charisma course as well as a business course, because with a business course, you can say the course is two thousand, and I will make you ten k easy math right but if the charisma course is two grand and i tell you your charisma will double it's like all right how you put a number on that mm, yeah so yeah well look i mean at the end of the day like you know the algorithms are rewarding this it's 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 just a marketplace of attention it makes all you know the girls are acting there in their self-interest these guys are acting in their self-interest and like you know whatever it is what it is like i don't really yeah. it, it it's mildly irritating yeah. to me you gotta do is whatever yeah it's mildly irritating but the reason it bugs me is because I have all I have all these Telegram channels with all these dudes, and they're like mm. they bring up this stuff, and they they're surprised that I don't agree with it. You know what I mean? 
They're like, what? Yeah. You don't like Andrew Tate? I'm like, why, why would I like Andrew Tate? Like, what, what is he doing that I want to do? Like, yeah. okay, he smokes cigars and he yells. I don't give a shit. Like, this is not interesting. That's, that's actually how I brought up your video. Yeah. Your, your stuff. I'm like, this guy's cool. He, do, he does stuff I want to do. He's living a life I want to live. Like, yeah. I don't care who has the most views. I don't care how big your private jet is. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, realistic like, because you know, like, you're just not going to become Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate is Andrew Tate, and he did his thing and he became rich and he fucking grinded. And he's been on camera for, I think, like, fucking 15 years. And that would made him very good at talking the right shit. Yeah. Just like, people have to understand you will not become Andrew Tate by watching a bunch of Andrew Tate videos also it's just like yeah it's, like, it's just like I don't know I mean you know a couple of years ago everyone was irritating me with like bringing up vaccine debates and then it yeah. moved to like Andrew Tate I'm like don't you guys realize you're just you're like the girls talking about gossip magazines and Kylie Jenner's ex-boyfriend <laughs> yeah. you're just talking about the trendy stuff like why don't you guys like spend your time like trying to get better at stuff yeah. yeah, go outside like, for a bit. Say hi to. Someone. Yeah, like learn stuff from people that have things you want. Okay, do you want, like, like my Telegram channel became this vaccine debate channel for like the longest. It's like like hours. I'm like, you guys, what are we learning? What are we doing here? You know? They're like, yeah, but didn't you see this link? Look at this oh, yeah. Illuminati. I'm like, okay, can we, you know? And now they all moved to like Andrew Tate jail. Did you guys see this? The doc I'm going to move to Trump again. Are... When is the next election? You know, uh, you want to share a little bit about your program and um, what actually, what is the outcome for guys who, who work with you? What's your desired outcome for them? So we have a program that's coming out called the Cancel Cure. So the Cancel Cure oh, is my like price. Support. Huh? Tell me about that. That's interesting. So the Cancel Cure is a very niche product. And what it is is, I've been canceled like 15 times and it's a course on privacy. It's a course on what's, what's called operational security. So, you know, we talk about how to, it's basically how to become immune from cancel culture. We talk about facial recognition, doxing methods, digital footprints, um, you know, ways to protect yourself in a, a society where false accusations exist, how to stay safe as a, cause a lot, a lot of our clients are like, they have a lot to lose. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are actually really scared to live an interesting life because they're so scared to lose. You know, I can get falsely accused. Mm -hmm. Like one of one of one of the guys that I coach is uh, well, kind of hard to talk about him without people knowing who it is. But he's a multi billionaire who right, flies around in jets, and the guy has relationship struggles because when girls look up who he is. Yeah, so like his his problem is like, oh, dude, he's so scared of being canceled. He's so scared of this. He's like, ah, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this because people are going to Google me and blah, blah, blah. So like the cancel cure is like, how do you solve this problem of being someone who wants to protect themselves in that age of cancel culture? So that's a course that's coming out in like 10 days. And um, I mean, I go really deep. We talk about facial recognition. We talk about doxing methods, the ways that the way that people dox you. Um you know, here's an example, a very trivial example. A lot of guys use WhatsApp and they use their real phone number on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Well, with a phone number, you can do a background search on someone. If you sign up for those public records websites, you can just type in the phone number. And if you're using the real number everywhere for years, it'll pull up your stuff and I can get your address. Right. So if you're going to be talking to like hundreds of girls, you know, using your WhatsApp, you, you don't want to give your number out. So I talk about ways that you, you can use crypto to buy rental, like rent a phone number for five minutes just to get the text verification on WhatsApp. So like all my WhatsApp numbers are fake. I talk about, you know, having self-destruct on all your chats and like ways of preventing screenshots and like, you know, ways of screening. And it's, it's basically a full blown privacy course to protect guys in this age. You know, we talk about how to scrub your name off public records requests. You know, there's actually services you can pay to nuke your name off that. Another program that we run is called the Millionaire Social Circle, which is a kind of like a mastermind. We do weekly calls. We have uh, live events every few months in different countries where we'll do photography sessions. We do uh, social events and we do like lectures. So 
it's uh it's also like a really cool just a cool experience a lot of guys sign up just because it's fun you know mm -hmm. they're like so then you know the next one's gonna be in thailand we're gonna be doing a bunch of stuff we will rent yachts we'll rent mansions and you know That's we take it's really cool it's similar, really... similar things uh i think we maybe we should collab on that one day Cool, man. Well, yeah, listen, uh, find me at David Bond. Just go to YouTube, type in David Bond. And uh, this is yes. really fun. Good. Cool. So, uh, yeah, whenever things up, let me know. You know? Yeah. yeah, guys, make sure to follow David. Interesting stuff. He's always on the edge of uh, stuff and hacking, dating. So thanks for tuning in. And I'm going to link David's socials below. Thanks, David, for coming on. And see you in another episode if people want to see it.